Hey everybody, my name is Ace Fangirl, and welcome back to another episode of Dream Daddy. Last time we had our first date with Brian, and we did not beat him at mini golf, regrettably. But it's uh, it's okay. We're over it. It's fine. I think I had to mow his lawn, but whatever. We're gonna let bygones be bygones, and we're about to go on his second date after Amanda gets into college, which is, you know, great and all. Very supportive, yeah. oh. supporting my daughter. Yeah. I'm very proud. <sighs> but anyways, so last time we talked to Brian about possibly going fishing, and Brian now thinks we're like some kind of fishing god, but we're not. We just like straight up lied to him. Um, so I don't know exactly what we're going to do about that when the time comes. Um, also, I'm hoping that this episode's not going to glitch and Welcome close out my sound recording again, because that would suck a whole lot. Okay, we're going to do Brian. Let's go, Brian. Uh, message. Hi, Brian. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm so not ready. It's going to be more mini games. I am pretty sure, but it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I, I believe in us. We can do it. I don't know. <laughs> I know there's an achievement for getting a high score on the fishing minigame, but I don't know if that's, like, this date or the next date. We're gonna find out together. It's a little... I'm a little freaked out, but, you know, it's gonna be fine. Whatever happens is gonna happen, it's okay. And it's giving me an spinning circle of death, which is never a good sign. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't know why it does this to me. Oh, there we go. All right, okay, we're, we're messing it. Hey, days, oh, we are going fishing. Hey, Daisy and I are going fishing tomorrow. Are you in or out? Oh, I have a message from Brian. Oh no, I've been dreading this day. I accidentally boasted about my abilities as a fisherman to Brian, and now he's challenging me to another dad off. This is not a challenge, Miles. Why you gotta read into it that way? I've been doing my fishing research online that I'm nowhere close to being an expert. Still, though, I have to accept. I type back to Brian. Sounds great, man. Super excited to catch all of those fish. Make sure your mower is in good working order, because you're going to be all over my lawn this weekend. That'll show him. Brian responds back, letting me know that tomorrow he'll pick us up at an hour I had previously forgotten existed. Man, that's going to be a rough start. It's probably like four in the morning. Amanda? Amanda comes into the room from the kitchen, eating a cheese stick by biting it off piece by piece like some kind of monster. How are you supposed to eat cheese sticks if you don't eat- I'm, I admit that I'm not a cheese stick aficionado. I don't eat cheese sticks because it's too much cheese. But, I mean, why is that not okay? I didn't raise you like that. Mm. It's called string cheese- oh! Never mind. Okay, I thought it was like a, a cheddar cheese stick or something. Uh, that's not cheddar. Like the, the white and yellow one. That's string cheese. You're supposed to string it. It's called string cheese and not chompy cheese for a reason, Amanda. Dad. Possibly. I mean, it's just a bonus. No, Amanda, we have to go fishing tomorrow. <laughs> well, you. Oh, yeah, she's the real winner here. How do I become a master at fishing overnight? You went fishing in the Girl Scouts, didn't you? Mm. Had to, like, be outside. I was never in the Girl Scouts because I did know that I had to, like, be outside and tie knots and stuff and was like, mm-mm. But I have to beat Brian. Hmm. Okay. What is it, Amanda? Mm-hmm. Uh, give me a refresher. <laughs> oh, this is a very educational story. Of course I remember. What does it have to do with fishing? Yes, no, I get it, Amanda, don't worry, I got you. 
I don't get it. <sighs> but you can't make a drink? What do horses have to do with fish and burns? Hmm. <laughs> of course you don't. You wouldn't understand. It's a dad thing. Okay. Okay. Brian's just... I'm gonna save. I feel like something's coming that I'm gonna have to, like, pick an option for. And I don't... I want to try really hard because I'm not... I don't have a lot of confidence in my abilities in a fishing minigame. I just don't have a lot of confidence in my skills. Oh, never mind. He just thinks that he's so much better than me, and he purposefully reminds me of that whenever he can. It's like he has to one-up me. I have to beat him at his own game. Hmm? Yes. No, Amanda. Okay. I know that's what's happening. I was about to say, that is what's happening. Ugh. Yeah, okay. Night, Panda. Alright. Oh my god, it's still dark. I brush my teeth and throw on some pajamas. Oh, never mind. We haven't gone to bed yet. I brush my teeth and throw on some pajamas. I climb into bed, set my alarm, and close my eyes. Okay. Sleep. Oh my god. We're not gonna be able to sleep. And then we're gonna fall asleep on the fishing trip. I am calling it now. Oh my god, I so relate to this, though. I have so much trouble falling asleep. I am wide awake. I can't help but think about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there's something I could glean from it to give me an edge over Brian. I was about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him downstairs. It was still dark out. I had no idea what was going on. Before I knew it, we were both alone on a freezing cold lake. I had to sit there for hours. While it got hot and muggy, the air thick with bugs, I picked a mosquito bite while my dad sat in stony silence, fishing pole in one hand and a beer in the other. We didn't catch anything. On the long drive home, my father bought me a pack of cigarettes and didn't say a thing. I was nine! What was my father doing? That didn't help, and I think I have some repressed sadness about my father. I'll deal with that later. What? That was such an odd interlude that just happened. I'm sitting on a boat in the middle of a body of water. I can't see any land, but I know it's a lake. The water is placid and still. I'm holding a fishing pole. Is it, are, is it gonna be my dad? Am I gonna get to see my dad? I don't understand why, but it feels like my life depends on catching fish right now. I cast my lure into the water and wait, and wait, and wait. My whole body is being filled with hopelessness as I watch the line disappear into the depths below. You used the wrong lure. I look up and see my father, just as he looked on that one cold morning, disapproving. I'm panicking now. I pull the lure up and try to grab a different one, but all of the lures in my tackle box are the exact same. I look up to my father for guidance, but he's gone. Oh my god, this is a horrible nightmare. I try casting again, but I can't hold my footing. My boat tips over and I fall into the water. Sinking further and further, I see the multitudes of fish that have been lying just below the surface, all swimming around me, as if to taunt me. One fish swims up to me. He has Brian's eyes. That's creepy. That does sound like something Brian would say, TBH. Oh my god, that scared me. Ooh. I jolt awake to the sound of my alarm. It's fishing day. That would explain the weird dream. I groggily slip on clothes and get ready. I spot Amanda's door half open and see her still curled up in a mountain of blankets. Walking over to her bed, I give her a tiny kiss on the forehead. Oh. Fishing day, kiddo. You ready? Me. But that's when it's time for class, and no one wakes me up. That's, like, my inner dialogue. I wonder if she'll bring her camera. Maybe she'll get some nice pictures of the lake. Well, you gotta get up. I can't do this without you. Also, stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comforter over her head. Which one? To getting up or sleeping in your clothes? Amanda. Uh-huh. No, you won't. All right. Brian should be here in 20, so you better not just go back to sleep. Amanda sticks her hand through the blanket to wave me away. I leave her room and make myself some coffee and another cup with lots of cream and sugar for Amanda whenever she gets up. Amanda eventually wanders in and chugs her coffee while I do word jumbles. I had enough time to do all that in 20 minutes? 
I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Wow, it is dark outside. Still rubbing our eyes, we walk outside to see Brian. He's decked out in fishing gear, which looks surprisingly like his normal outfit. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. Hmm. I don't think early bird is one word, but that's okay. You ready to fish? He was born ready. I'm sure he was. My eyes narrow in on Brian. It's a good day to die. Hop on in, guys. Let's get this fishing party started. I walk over to the driver's side door and open it. Maxwell, how are you already in my car? Brian's dog immediately hops into the driver's seat, wagging his tail furiously. Can I see your license, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maxwell, you silly pupper. Maxwell obediently hops in the back to cuddle with Daisy. Amanda settles in next to Maxwell and Daisy and immediately falls asleep. <laughs> always, Brian, always. I'm ready for glory. Miles, seriously, you need to calm down. I struggle to stay awake as we drive to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio as I watch trees pass by. So, where exactly are we headed? Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. That's a good, that's good. Ooh, cool. My, uh, my fishing pole is in the shop, getting it tuned up. Do you maybe have an extra I could borrow? Of course he does. As nice as it sounds like yours is. Oh, you do not know. <laughs> right. I am digging a hole here. I stare out the f at the forest lining the highway. The sun is just barely over the horizon, scattering dusky pink light through the trees. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing on the side of the road before it leaps back into the brush. After a nice, quiet drive, Brian eventually tells me to pull off the highway and onto a dirt road. The car bumps along until we reach a clearing that opens up onto a magnificent lake. Ooh, this, is so this sounds nice. Oh wow, this is so nice. I step out of the car and help Brian unload our gears. Maxwell runs around us barking. The kids wake up and wander to the shore where Daisy tries to teach Amanda how to skip rocks. Brian and I carry the tackle boxes and cooler down to the edge of the lake where he has a canoe waiting. How did he do that? Is Maxwell coming in the boat with us? I help Brian place a tiny dog-sized life vest onto Maxwell. Aw, cute. We get the dog. All right, your turn. Brian hands me a lime green life vest. What? I don't like any of these answers. No, safety is important. Um, we can't say no. But like, I don't want to say maybe if I fall in, you'll save me. That's weird and awkward. I mean, I... If I fall in, I'm counting on you to rescue me. Oh, of course he loves that, though. <laughs> Brian turns to Amanda and Daisy, who are still skipping rocks. Uh, they're like, no. Aww. Amanda hurls a rock into the pond with gusto. <laughs> Take that, water. That's my girl. No, she just likes throwing rocks. It's fine. Don't worry about it, Daisy. Don't worry. Whoa. Oh, she doesn't even know. <laughs> That's my girl. I'm sure she doesn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, good for you, girl. Okay, have fun. <laughs> Don't go too far. Yeah. Brian puts the life vest around himself, and we throw all of our equipment into the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps in and takes his place, looking out over the over the front of the boat. I get into the canoe as Brian shoves off. We paddle together to get ourselves in the middle of the lake. Oh, look at this. This is nice. Look, I can see some fish. Come on. We gotta have some good luck, right? Yeah, I know. That's pretty common fisherman knowledge, after all. Fisherman knowledge that I am knowledgeable about. Oh, God. No, I really don't want to i don't want to we're saving i don't want to gamble on this one i really don't you know it <laughs> never mind oh god is it gonna be like stardew valley fishing because i can do that kinda you can catch more than one 
Sounds easy enough to me. What's on the line? Ha, <laughs> see what I did there? Besides all the fish I'm gonna catch, obviously. Pew pew! Badoom. Uh. Oh god. Oh god, what? What is more high stakes than mowing a lawn? Custody of our children. <laughs> Miles! Wow! More than that. <gasps> no! The Whackmaster 2000? That's a limited edition. Oh. Oh. Mm. The cordless version? Ooh. Shit. The Reach Cut 3000 is state of the art. My weed whacker is a prized possession, but there are those hard to reach branches at the back of the yard that have been begging for a pruding. You're on. You're, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on. It's fine, everything's fine. Everything's fine, Every I'm not saving because I think I'm gonna fail. No, it's fine. It's fine. We shake on it. I suddenly remember that I don't know how to fish. My foolish fatherly pride will one day be my undoing. I watch as Brian ties a lure and does some stuff I can't quite follow with his fishing pole. He casts into the lake. Oh boy, now I have to do that. I stare down at the tackle box and at the pole in my hand. <laughs> Insult the fish. Um, I'm gonna... Well, I mean, stretching before physical activity is always good. But, I mean, putting some bait on the hook seems most intuitive to fishing. I fish a worm from the styrofoam container Brian bought. It's slippery, but I think I can get one on the hook if I just focus. Oh god, I'm bleeding! Oh god, the blood's everywhere! The worm is not on the hook! No! No, I meant to do that. The blood attracts the fish. They can smell it up to a mile away, you know. No, it's definitely fish. <laughs> All right, Miles, you keep on doing you. Now what? Perform fish mating call. Tie a knot or something. I mean, that seems good. I take my pole and try to tie an elaborate looking knot to impress Brian. The classic hunter's bent. I learned that one in my youth. Yup, this one isn't coming apart anytime soon. With this knot, I will cast my heavenly line upon the unsuspecting water and deliver unto us a bountiful harvest. I look over to Brian. He doesn't seem to be paying attention. Let's cast this sucker. Pull my rod back and launch the lure as hard as I can. Uh -huh. As hard as I can. Typo. And the lure flies off the line and sails far, far away, landing in the lake with a loud sploosh. Well, sorry, I uh, judged the wind speed wrong. This cold air drives the pressure down. Uh. Oh, thanks, dude. Brian hands me his pole with a smile, and I just sit there, feeling like an idiot. Oh god, oh no, this means this, this means minigame. Okay, hold on. Oh god, I'm stressed. This is not good. Oh god, oh god, what is this? They group up, all you gotta do is line up. This is a lot of frame rate dropping, and reel them in. Oh, cool, it's, it's, it's Honey Pop, guys. We're doing it, this is so great. I need to match three of the same species. Uh, I can't tell which fish is which. Match that fish. Match that fish. Catch of the day. Catch of the day. Catch of the day. I'm gonna. Ooh. Now you're fishing. Now I'm fishing. Rainbow trout. Rainbow trout. What? No, I want this nice one. Catch. Um. Oh, I don't... Oh, uh, Wait, what? I don't understand what I'm doing here. Hold on. I'm confused. Can I move them anywhere? I don't understand. Oh my god, I'm losing. This is very odd. Now you're fishing. I don't... Un um... Okay. No, I want it... Can I only... Oh, I can only move it one spot at a time. That was not clear to me before. Okay, I definitely understand way better now that I figured that out for myself. Okay, I don't- maybe I'm just stupid and like- no, 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 don't move that. Maybe I'm just stupid? I get- I get- I 
case of same fish too. Um, maybe I'm just stupid, but like I did not understand that at all. That I could only move it one space at a time. Was I just misguided in that? It's possible. And that actually makes it a lot harder and a lot more annoying. And I don't like that actually at all. Do I lose points for not nice matching them? Like in one match? I don't know. I'm not looking. This mini game was not explained to me very well. Now you're fishing. Also, I don't like how they fly at me. It's a bit odd. I'm, I'm trying to match those cool looking ones, but they just don't seem to want to match. Now you're fishing. Okay, how did I do? Did I do okay? Oh, well, I did perfect, but I was supposed to do 2,000 points on that, so that's great. Um, good work. Did I win, though? I feel like I could have done better on that if I had known. If I had known beforehand that... Um, if I don't beat him, I want to try one more time. Because I feel like I can do better now that I actually understand the rules. Wow, this is way tougher than I thought. I look over to Brian, who's smiling and obviously enjoying his time out here on the lake. I will crush him. Suddenly, the fishing pole jumps in my hand. I reflexively tug upwards. I think I got something big. The tip of the pole dips down repeatedly, and the line starts to run. <laughs> I'm trying. I finally get the fish right up next to the boat. It's a long, beautiful rainbow trout. Brian hands me a net. I lean down and notice that my hands are shaking with excitement. This fish is bigger than all the ones Brian's caught. That pole saw is my all my... Oh. The entire canoe tips over with me. I find myself sinking into the lake. I should have taken the life vest. I wanted you to take the life vest, Miles. All of a sudden, I'm embraced under the water and pulled into Brian's arms. How romantic. I'm finally dragged upwards, sputtering water. All of our gear floats onto the surface. Maxwell doggy paddles around us in circles, having a great time. Hmm. Oh yeah, I'm good. Does that count as one? <laughs> Yay. I won, right? Brian laughs. Okay. Brian and I flip the canoe back over and fill it with our now soaking wet gear. We row back. Well, I mean, to be fair, that wasn't my fault. You could have balanced the canoe on the other side when you saw that I was going to lean over to get my fish. I'm not going to take 100% of the blame on this one. We row back to the shore with Maxwell in tow. Oh, hey, hi. Uh, Brian has his shirt off. Uh, once we get to the beach, Maxwell darts off into the woods. Brian takes off his shirt. Dots of lake water glisten in the sun across his strong back. Gotta admit, hairy chest, not my thing. So, man, all that general contracting must have built that guy like an ox. He's surprisingly not ripped for a lot of general contracting work, but what do I know? I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Ah. Yeah, that sounds good. My what? My shirt? I, uh, yeah, okay. I reluctantly take off my own shirt and toss it to Brian. I suddenly wish I had done more sit-ups in my life, or any sit-ups at all, really. Another thing you've bested me in, stupid sexy Brian. Might as well fry that shirt up. Seems like it's the only lunch we'll have. Uh. Yeah, we can. There's conveniently two chairs right there. Once Brian gets the fire going, I sit and try to dry off my pants. Brian sets a couple of lures out by the water's edge. Yeah, we need to cook to eat, uh, catch to eat right now. Until another day. My stomach growls. I don't know. Yeah, I'll bet. Oh, I'm fine. Brian reaches into his cargo shorts and pulls out a few granola bars. <laughs> yes. Brian joins me by the fire and I accept the cargo short granola. Great. Where did the girls get off to? Shouldn't they be back by now? Yeah, they'll be fine. I'm not super worried. That's what I'm worried about. They're too smart. They probably established a small rural government by this point and installed themselves as leaders. I take a look around at the sun, cresting the tree line, casting the entire lake in a warm golden glow. The forest seems to be coming alive now. Birds chirp in the distance. Wow, nature is beautiful. A mosquito bites me. I slap my neck and curse. Nature sucks. This is me. Brian hands me a bottle of bug spray. I begrudgingly take it and douse myself. Ugh, I've always hated how this stuff smells. Oh, really? Yeah, you can, you seem like an outdoorsy guy. 
Maybe you and I have different sentiments on the outdoors. Maxwell comes bounding up to me, a huge stick in his mouth. He drops it at my feet and looks at me expectantly. Um, break this thing in half to assert your dominance. Um, no, I'm obviously, I'm going to save, but I'm obviously going to throw the stick towards the wood so I can actually play with the pupper. Fake, fake out throw. I'm not going to do that. That's so mean. I hurl the stick as hard as I can toward the tree line. Maxwell bolts after it, running as fast as his stubby little legs can carry him. Which, consequently, is not very fast. It is very cute, though. Ah. Thanks. I turn away so he can't see me blush. Maxwell brings the stick back to me, clearly proud of himself. Good boy, Maxwell. You're a very good and speedy boy. You're the world champ of fetch. It's time for the pets. What's the plan? Um, ooh, I, I feel like he likes belly rubs, if I remember right. Um, because Amanda rubbed his belly the first time we met him. So I feel like he might love belly rubs, and I kind of want to give him one if he likes it. Maxwell rolls over and lets me rub his belly. He wiggles on the grass, clearly loving it. Aww. Whoa, Brian! Ha ha. I, um, ha. I'm so flustered I can barely say anything. I just focus on petting Maxwell and hope Brian doesn't notice how much I'm sweating. While I'm playing with Maxwell, fish routinely begin... Oh. Bleh. Fish begin routinely pulling up Brian's lines. I watch Brian effortlessly fillet the fish, squeezing a bit of lemon on them and frying them up in a cast iron pan. Before we know it, we have a feast fit for a couple of shirtless dudes. Amanda and Daisy emerge from the woods, looking totally unscathed. <laughs> oh, okay. There are children present. Brian tosses me my now dry shirt. I pull it over my head, thankful that I will no longer be distracted by Brian and his pecs. Where have you guys been? Oh, good for you. What? Oh, come on, that's Bugs. Have you not played uh, Nancy Drew, creature of Kapu Cave? Hmm, I expected you guys to be more covered in, like, mud and stuff. Daisy looks offended. Yeah, Daisy's not a child. Amanda is. Amanda puts a hand on Daisy's shoulder. Ugh. <laughs> You're ten, sweetie. We take a seat around the fire, and Brian serves us all generous piles of fish on paper plates. It's absolutely delicious. Why does he have to be good at everything? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I bet it's awesome. Now I'm hungry. Daisy and Amanda both nod furiously, mouths full of fish. It's incredible. I've never had fish this good. Yeah, it's great. Hmm. Uh... Well, Amanda, we were out there on the lake, and then... Aww. Aww. He's covering for us. I'm not sure exactly why, but... Yeah. I... Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I can't believe he just covered for me. Gosh, he even out-humbles me. He's trying to beat me in everything, including my world-famous sense of humility. Wow. We finished our fish and ended up playing catch with Maxwell for a little while before we decide to head out. After cleaning up the camp, we pack up the station wagon and let Maxwell into the back seat. The poor pup falls asleep in a cuddle puddle with Amanda- Cuddle puddle, that's my new favorite terminology. With Amanda and Daisy. They've had a long day. Oh, thanks, Brian. I want to prove that I'm the most awake dad on the block, but yeah, I'm beat. Fine. As we drive away, I take one last look at the lake disappearing behind us and smile. I like this music. I rest my head against the window, and the low rumble of the dirt road beneath us lulls me into a peaceful sleep. This is such good music, I love it. Yeah, are we already home? I open my eyes and realize that I dozed off in the car. I self-consciously wipe a bit of drool off my chin. Oh, hey, I was resting my eyes. Uh, just in case we suddenly have to jump into any sort of conflict, so I'm super awake for it. And ready to fight. With my strong arms. My strong dad arms. Thanks, Brian. Hey, it was fun. Like, you don't have to thank me. Thanks for inviting us. Thanks for- oh, thanks for inviting us. I also had fun, actually. 
You too. Take it the easiest. Brian chuckles to himself as he unloads the car. Oh, we're already home. Amanda and I get inside and immediately collapse on the couch. <laughs> Long day. Yep. I was so close to that pool saw. Hmm. We had a competition. Yeah, Brian and I were competing to see who could catch the most fish and... Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Panda Panda, just look at the guy. He's so obviously got my number and he's rubbing my face in it. Ugh. Hmm. Yeah, seriously. Come on, Miles. Get it together. Dumb or clearly the superior dad? <laughs> uh, that's the, probably the, one of the best sentences in the game so far. Good night, Amanda. Amanda slut. Slides off the couch and face down onto the floor. I was about to say, that is not the direction to your bedroom, young lady. <laughs> Same, Amanda. Same. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. I don't care. Well, night, honey. Aw, that was cute. I liked it. That was a good... That, was, that went pretty well. I don't think I completely embarrassed myself. Oh. <laughs> wow, what an amazing day. Wow, look at my dad points. My dad points are not impressive, but my daddy point well, that could be construed as vaguely dirty. Uh anyways, yeah, that was that my dad points are not impressive. I don't know what that says about me. But <laughs> You know, it's fine, I guess. <laughs> so what's his third date gonna be then? Are we gonna go fishing again? Like, we've gone fishing now. What can we do for our third date? Maybe we're gonna build a deck. Maybe we're gonna go to a bar. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's probably gonna be another competition. Let's be real on that front. Uh, I don't know. All right. But that's gonna be it for this episode. So I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, join me next time for Brian's final date and Brian's ending. I hope you are as excited as I am to see what this last date holds for us. I'll see you then. Bye!